question of why. Like, why is it not working? What is what is it really that's just not working? Um, and I think the, the hard reality that we might need to like, think about is that the three of us just don't gel perfectly. Investors started looking at our numbers. Our user growth was doubling every month. Our GMV was growing steadily. Our product seemed stable. Uh, so from the investor's perspective, it was like, okay, now is the time to just pump all, all of the money into marketing this and grow 10x, you know, in the next two months. Okay, so I'll write the business case from my own lens. I think actually as an exercise, we should all write a business case. Exactly how we see the business. And, and get it to a point where, like, if someone reads this, they're like, we have to do this. And then we can poke holes and, and kind of work towards where we think, because I think that's what we're going to come together with, like, an aligned vision on paper that everyone here can read, and we're all game, and we go. Yeah, okay. I was looking around, I was like, why am I getting a bit nervous about this? Yeah. But nobody else is. Yeah, so I, I, did a, I did a litmus test, and yeah. I went to Steph, and I asked him about moments value proposition, showed him Koji, which, you know, had all of those other things. And I think you were there. I asked him why three times, and then Steph was trying to make the business case for moments and NFTs, and he was fluttering. He didn't yeah. know like what to say. When investors say scale, 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 now Aaron and Josh, Josh and I are going, well, what are we scaling? That was why we were sitting in in boardrooms for like a week and a half start, straight. And in the process of doing this, we started to have doubts, throwing all of our money into marketing exactly what this is at its current stage and at the current market, like where we're at in the world with NFTs, we didn't think it was the right move to make. In those discussions is actually where we picked up on there's going to be a longer term misalignment in where we want to take this business and how we want to grow the business. Um, and that's where we found the three of us were not aligned. ultimately just wound up having conversations about how we how we should best take the business forward what what we should focus on you know should we focus on consumer products should we focus on business to business products and um, and I think that was when the dynamic started to be questioned basically the, the number one reason that farming teams or startups don't work is that if the farming team isn't working together it hasn't been very nice for me I have been sleeping I'm stressed I had clearly articulated my vision for what I think the company should do. And it felt like perhaps Adam and Josh both didn't agree with that vision, right? And then I had to sit back and the first thing you ask yourself is, am I wrong? And if I am wrong, how do we resolve this? Is this me changing my mind on what the vision is? Or is this me taking a step back. To be completely transparent, yes, I was incredibly frustrated. What we're building right now is exactly what I envisioned us building. When I felt like we weren't going that direction, I was just kind of getting frustrated. In your career, it's really important to work on things that you're passionate about or else you're not going to do your best work. We'd discussed it extensively and we'd all agreed that, you know, if three of the four founders want to push the business in a certain direction and one doesn't, and the concession was that it would be best that I go and work on different things and they carry on with moment taking it in the direction that they want to. You know, I think we all sensed that there was a sort of change in the air as founders amongst one another. Nothing that happened came as a surprise at that point. It was just, just like, yep, we, we all feel the same about this. Let's make it happen. I, ca I care in a big way about the success of the business, whatever direction it goes in. So it was important to me that, you know, uh, I make the exit as easy as possible. For, for everybody. Uh, I don't I don't see how I can like in good faith continue taking a salary, continue having equity in the business where I don't understand the business. So look it's always it's always a difficult thing to have tabled, right? Uh, it's difficult to discuss anybody leaving the business at any point and it can be a little bit 
emotional. So of course it was it was a difficult conversation to have and it was saddening to be like have somebody leaving. I'm just happy about the fact that we reached a conclusion really quickly and the conclusion that we've made was for the best interest of the business. But going forward, you know, the the relationship dynamics that I, I, I like you said, you know, I built strong uh, relationships and friendships with people here. There's, there's not one person in the office that I wouldn't want to carry on keeping in communication with, hanging out with. I want to go grab a drink with all you guys sometime soon. My relationship to Josh now. Still look up to him a lot, taught me so much. I'll keep in touch with him and definitely run some ideas by him one day. Josh was, it really feels like we're doing a eulogy. He's not dead. Josh taught us how to press K in Figma. Yeah. I haven't seen Josh since he's been gone, other than when he came to say goodbye, um, but I do miss him. In understanding why it didn't work out in terms of the new B2B direction, that kind of made sense. Uh, but that being said, I, I really do miss his energy in the office. And I always think, okay, like, what would Josh think about this email template? Obviously at the time I felt like, yo, it's only bad happen, like, oh. Like, it couldn't be because they are always so close. But since I clarify everything, it's like no beef, no banter, as long as they don't have any bad blood. That was fine by me. Yeah, well, I mean, Josh is the person who kind of scouted me. Oh, true. So it was kind of bleak to see him go. And he, he like, taught me to do a lot of things. Um, so I'm obviously very thankful to him for that. I think it's worth letting everyone know and everyone stress up when things aren't final. So I think it was a good way where they handled things and then everything was sorted. And then when the end result was there, we were told. And yeah, like there's no way I'm not going to stay in touch with Rob. And then for, for Adam and Erin, you know, exactly as, exactly as you'd said, you know, we'd worked so closely together over the years. It's Rob now. <laughs> Do you want to? Yeah, is yeah. that all right? Can you just hold that between you two? Do I have to hold the button? That's good. Okay. So maybe. So I can't be too long. I've got to go to your lunch. So yeah. we'll just do it okay. quickly. This, this rates 10 out of 10 as a breakup. <laughs> this is like. I really want to stay in touch and I want to help him and I want him to be the success he deserves to be. Love you, bro. I'm gonna go to lunch. That was crazy timing. I promise I wasn't saying that stuff after he'd walked <laughs> in. I said it before he walked in. Why our plan is to focus on these three things. We're gonna be perfecting the marketplace, we're gonna be working on the B2B API, and we're gonna to cater a little bit more towards traders. So for the B2B API, I think this one's a, a, quite a no-brainer. There's so many businesses approaching us already. Saying like, hey, can you do NFTs for me? We can learn a lot about the NFT space and its uses and applications just by speaking to these guys. We can get a million creators on our platform and if we have no buyers, we're not like our creators aren't gonna be happy. So one of the main reasons we're trying to push into the B2B is actually for the creators, right? So when we get maybe a hundred thousand people because we did a partnership with a bank or some other company, you know, that's gonna bring a hundred thousand people that aren't creators that will be able to look at the creator's work and say, do I want to buy this, yes or no? And those people probably will have money if they're coming through that kind of an integration. All the features that we're actually building are majority, majority of them are actually would say are like creator first. They're not actually for businesses. It's actually directly just to display content better and make it look nicer. And we'll introduce some, oh yeah, so it is creator focused. What advice would you give now to someone who was in a similar situation to you? just general advice that I would give. So obviously I think choosing your business partners is an incredibly important task. And we're fortunate that we uh, were all business partners that were very logical, very amicable, very reasonable. And that's what, what made it such an easy break, you know. As soon as the decision has been made that someone needs to leave or that people feel like that, you do it. Doesn't mean it matter even if it's in the morning or whatever, like you've just got to start. Like if you're sitting in a company where you're working with someone that you know you or they want to leave, cool, this is what we're doing, bang, 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 done. The next piece of advice I would give is if you're feeling like there's a, a workload imbalance in, in terms of your partners, table it immediately. You know, talk about it straight away. If you think there's a vision misalignment, table it immediately. How did you tell the team? If you're a founder or if you're a leader in a business, I would say my advice there is to present solutions, present decisions, and also be uh, as open and transparent as possible in talking about how you arrive to those decisions, why those decisions are the way they are. It's a question I've asked you in many talking heads before. Where do you think the future of the moment is? Whew. <laughs> I think moment has a couple of paths that it can very comfortably walk down going forward. I think it can continue being a consumer-facing company. 
and it can find tremendous success there. I think the best answer is that we're going to be the number one innovator with, when it comes to NFTs um, and getting it into the hands of the mass market. It's very evident. I mean, we've got, some, we've got five massive MOUs signed uh, for our B2B API. Um, so clearly that's a, it's been a good direction, but it's going to be a completely different way of interacting with the internet. It just opens up a world of so many more possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I think the future of moments is going to be building the backbone of the, the crypto world. And I think we've got an incredibly well positioned team to build that and execute on it. And I am going to be following the journey every step of the way and also working hard to enable the team wherever I can, just from more of a distance.